I'm going to be honest here. None of these cars appeal to me. You can't put SUV and compact together and putting SUV and two-wheel drive together, well, that's just sacrilege. But that's the case only in my mind. And as you can understand, I am totally wrong. For these cars as compact SUVs are hot sellers in today's market space. Maruti Suzuki's Vitara Brezza is the best seller by a country mile here with well over 10,000 units in the sales charts on a monthly basis. As for the Ford EcoSport and Tata Nexon, well, those cars are selling between four to 5,000 units on a monthly basis each. So this is prime space for car makers in India. So much so that Mahindra has taken yet another dig at the compact SUV segment with this, the brand new XUV 300. And the headline the XUV is making here is that it is the most powerful car in this segment. So let's cut to the chase and jump straight into the driver's seat. Now the XUV 300, as I mentioned earlier, is the most powerful car here. And you know what? It feels it. This thing just takes off. That turbo really kicks in nice and strong at 1500 RPM and gives you solid boost. And this actually reminds me, in fact, makes me feel rather that I'm driving a hot hatchback because this thing is tiny, it's sub four meter, and it is fast. As a result, this feels like more of an enthusiast machine you have to look at the whole picture here. The clutch is really long, there's so much travel there. The gear throws are long themselves. The gearbox feels a little vague in its operation. So all of this, you know, hinders some of that performance-oriented nature of this car. And I would have really liked this car to feel more taut on those departments. Now coming back to drivability, as I said, there is turbo lag below 1500 RPM. But once there, this will really shoot forward. But once you're at 3,500 RPM, from then on, the engine note really becomes loud and uh, the engine begins to feel strained as well. It does not feel as powerful. So the power band is a little bit narrow. So while this may be a quick car, I would have also liked the steering wheel to feel much better. Now you get multiple steering modes over here, normal, comfort and sport. So what that does in a sense, it weighs up the steering wheel. But you know, it's an artificial thing and it doesn't feel intuitive, it doesn't feel accurate, you don't feel inspired. And in fact, when you change these driving modes in the dead center position, there's a little bit of area where off center, you don't feel the weight and then you start to feel the weight. So it feels a bit odd at times. Now on the handling department, the chassis and balance of this car is not too bad. It's just that there's a fair amount of body roll. The other car here that has body roll is the Ford EcoSport. And in that also you can feel quite a bit of it, but in this it is fairly pronounced. So you know, straight line stability is one thing, but when it comes to corners, a car that is fast has to also be able to negotiate those sharp bends with just as much confidence. Otherwise the suspension isn't too bad, it cushions the bumps quite comfortably. So on the whole, this will make a comfortable car to travel in. So while this XUV300 grabs a lot of attention out on the road, on the inside, it's equally good to look at. But I'd like to say that it's the top portion of this dashboard that really feels nice, it feels upmarket. All of the switch gear is very nice. But when you move lower down and come down to the center console, uh, some of these plastics, they feel like they belong in earlier Mahindras. But coming back to positives, I really like the seats in this car because they're really supportive and they're really comfortable and well-designed. Some of the other stuff that I like are the switch gear for the power windows, and the mirror adjustment, as well as the engine stop start button, because all of this feels very high rent, even the headlight and the wiper stocks. So overall, the cabin of the XUV300 offers a decent amount of space for four occupants. It's gonna be a little bit tight for the fifth occupant, uh, but the biggest downside here would be that tiny boot. It's really small, and it's gonna to be tough to accommodate all your luggage for long journeys. And with that, it's now time to come to the other Indian car. The next on 1.5 litre diesel engine definitely feels smoother, quieter and more refined. And that's not all, for this engine is also more powerful than the EcoSport and Brezza and it sure feels like that out on the road. For once the turbo comes on song, this car can really pick up pace but then again you have to factor in that now there's a more powerful car in the mix. So the next on sure has its work cut out. 
So in terms of refinement and power, the Nexon sure is an impressive machine. But then again, there are some downsides here too. The clutch has a lot of travel in it, it's fairly long. And then there's the matter of this gearbox. This is a fairly notchy unit and the throws are long too. This car is nice and wide and it has very wide profile rubber as well. So all of this combined makes the Nexon quite a fun car to drive out on open highways. So the Nexon definitely stands out on the road. It's a nice car to look at. And when you come to the interiors of this car, you won't be disappointed either as build quality is decent. Moving on to the instrument cluster and the switch gear, everything looks nice and it feels good to operate. Overall, there's a lot of space at the front, there's a lot of space at the back, and the Nexon comes with a healthy equipment list. I just wish that this infotainment screen was better to operate. The Brezza, this has the oldest engine of the lot. It's the 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel engine sourced from Fiat. And it feels its age, you know, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of vibrations. So this car undoubtedly has the highest NVH amongst all the other cars here. So the Brezza's cabin is definitely the noisiest place to be in, in comparison to all the other cars here. But it's not all doom and gloom, because the Brezza has a very mechanical nature. So all of those vibrations and everything, once you start driving fast, you know, you can feel it and you can feel every little bit of what the car is doing. And that's what makes this car actually the most fun to drive amongst all the other cars here. Be it steering feedback or the suspension setup, which is fairly stiff actually. All of that comes together very well and you can really push this car. You can drive it fast around high speed bends. You'll get some tire squeal, but this car will just grip and grip and go. But there's a flip side to that as well for the stiff suspension setup results in a fairly bumpy ride. The Brezza then clearly isn't designed for rear seat comfort. What it's designed for is for the driver to have a whole lot of fun. But then you're gonna tell me that this car is the least powerful and yes, it is on paper. It makes 89 bhp. However, that's only its on paper figure. Now there is a fair bit of turbo lag below 1700 RPM. But once the turbo comes on, that's when this car really takes off. And the harder you rev this diesel engine, the more it likes to push. So the Brezza's engine, despite the lack of power, is actually the most free revving and it will go all the way to 5,000 RPM and this engine will still be punching with all its might. So this, all in all, is a great fun car to drive. You know, the gear throws are short and the clutch doesn't have too much travel. Coming to the interiors, the Brezza has an all black interior and I won't complain about plastic quality or build quality here because actually everything is very decent. There's nothing to complain about. The switch gear feels quite decent as well and it's got all of the equipment you need. Now in the interest of fairness, I have to mention that this is the ZDI variant, whereas the top end is the ZDI Plus variant. Now in the past, we have driven that car, we have reviewed it, we've tested it on multiple occasions. So what we are going to do is insert shots of the ZDI Plus model cabin just to give you a fair idea of what this car offers in terms of equipment and design in respect to the other cars here. And touch screen infotainment system in that is easily the best in the business because it's easy to read, it's intuitive to operate and the voice commands are simply the best in the segment by a long margin. Now in terms of equipment, you may not get uh, different driving modes or adjustable steering, but trust me, you don't have to do any of that. This car drives very well on its own and it's got everything you need realistically. So while that's all the good stuff, what I wish for in the Brezza are better seats. They could have definitely been more supportive at the front and even at the back, you need a little more leg room to be more comfortable on long journeys. The boot of the Brezza as well, it's quite small. So uh, these little things, you know, it's a sub four meter car, so it's quite difficult to play around here with space and looks and design and everything. But uh, you just have to look at the EcoSport. It's been designed very well to offer everything to the customer. Now the EcoSport's 1.5 litre turbo diesel engine has a very wide power band. So you can pick up speed from 1000 RPM onwards and there won't be any jadder. Now what that means is that this car is extremely easy to drive in traffic 
simply because you don't have to change gears too many times. Otherwise, the gear throws are accurate and the clutch has very less travel as well. So while the EcoSport is very comfortable to drive, I'm afraid it's not the most fun car to drive simply because there is a fair amount of turbo lag and once you get past 2000 RPM, that's where power comes in nice and strong. It's the mid-range of this engine where the meat of the power band lies and you can push it from 2000 to 4000 RPM comfortably beyond which it starts to feel a little strained. But make no mistake, once you start pushing, this can pick up speeds fairly quickly. Moving over to the comfort question, well, the seats are really nice and comfortable. They're very supportive. The suspension is very pliant. Over the years, Ford has softened up the suspension of this car to make it more comfortable for Indian roads. Now, the downside of that is that it's lost some of those sharper handling traits, but then again, it's not too shabby now either. So the EcoSport, I would have to say, holds the best balance between all these cars in terms of performance, refinement and comfort. It's fairly quiet in this cabin as well. Not as quiet as the XUV 300s. But then again, this is the best well-rounded package available in this price range. Amongst all the cars here, I believe that this car is the most mature offering. Now, out of all the cars here, the EcoSport's cabin truly feels the most premium. The black color theme all around looks great. It looks upmarket. The quality of plastics and fit and finish is very decent as well. But the other aspect about the EcoSports cabin that has to be highlighted are these seats. Uh, the benches, both for the front seats and the rear seats, the benches are quite long, so they give you a lot of under thigh support. They're very well designed. The cushioning is just right for the side bolsters as well. So you're very comfortable and even on long journeys at the back as well, there's plenty of leg room. So this is a great car for comfort because everybody in this cabin is going to be very comfortable, be it driving around the city or out on open highways. So now that we've evaluated all these cars, I have to bring down some very important points here. The XUV and the Nexon may be the more powerful cars here, but at the end of the day, it's the Brezza that is still the ultimate driver's machine in this segment. Now the XUV and Nexon have a lot of things going for them. The Nexon has different driving modes. You can change the weight of the steering wheel in the XUV. So they've got a lot of interesting features. The cabins are decent. But when you look at the bigger picture, it's the two older cars here, the EcoSport and the Brezza. These cars are more sorted products overall. As I mentioned, the Brezza continues to be the ultimate driver's machine in this segment. I also like its infotainment system. I believe it's the best one in the segment. And so we come back to the oldest car in the segment, the Ford EcoSport. This car pioneered the compact SUV space. And as it turns out, it's still leading from a fair margin. The EcoSport is a comfortable car all around. The suspension setup is now softer than the cars that debuted in India. The engine is refined, it's smooth, and it's got adequate power. But as I've said, when you take everything into consideration, the EcoSport is the most complete machine all around. It's very nice to drive, it's comfortable, and it's got everything you need. So as it turns out, the newest cars here still have a few things to learn from the old contenders.